This chapter, we are going to talk about light and matter. Okay, so there are several topics we're going to cover in this chapter. Um, the the first three, okay, we're going to cover this week, and the next four we're going to cover in the following week. The starlight we see tonight actually began its journey to Earth decades, centuries, even millennia ago. The faint rays from the most distant, distant galaxies have taken billions of years to reach us. The stars and galaxies in the night sky show us not just the far away, but also the long ago. Okay. Um, for example, Andromeda Galaxy, which is 2.5 million uh, light years away from us. Um, you know, how do we know um, information about this particular galaxy, which is so far away from us? Okay. Uh, virtually all we know about the universe beyond Earth's atmosphere has been learned from analysis of light, also we call electromagnetic radiation, received from the objects that are too distant for a personal visit or any kind of controlled equipment. So that's why it's very important for us to learn about light, okay, because uh, that's the key source we can get information from the sky. So before we talk about um, light, we want to introduce the concepts of waves. Uh, because light is one type of wave, and all the waves, they have some commonalities, but also uh, they have their unique properties. So what is a wave? Okay, Wave is a transmission of energy without the physical transport. Of material so here is the example of wave so think about water wave if, if you go to the beach you're gonna see the waves coming up so you, you have ups and downs ups and downs like that okay so there are several key points I want to mention here when we describe a wave so assuming that wave is moving along this direction so that shows you the direction of wave motion and then there are uh, several important points you need to pay attention to. So these highest points here, we call them crests. And then these lowest points, we call them troughs. Okay. And you, as you can see here, okay, this is undisturbed state. Okay. And then once you have the wave form, just imagine, you know, you have a rope and you're shaking the rope up and down. And then initially when the rope was undisturbed, this is the, the state. And then once you form a wave here, you're going to have crests, a bunch of crests and a bunch of troughs. And then the highest, you know, how far the maximum distance away from the undisturbed state we call amplitude here so that's the amplitude and then we have another concept here which is called wavelength wavelength is the length is the distance between two adjacent crests or two adjacent troughs it can be go, going from here to here or going from here to here so uh, please pay attention uh, that wavelength is the distance between two adjacent crests or two adjacent troughs. And this slide here shows you an example, which, you know, is a water wave. So what you can, you know, what, uh, if you drop a stone or a pebble into a pond, it's going to generate a water wave so the water is going to move up and down, okay? And the wave travels, is going to transmit energy. Just like, you know, um, for light, okay? Light comes from an object in the sky, 
and then uh, it's going to transmit energy to us. So for instance, the light coming from the sun, okay, it's emitted from the sun, and then it's going to uh, travel through space, okay, and then it's going to transmit energy uh, to us. The other concept related to wave is called frequency. Frequency is number of wave crests that pass a given point per second. So for instance, if you are looking at, if you go to the beach, you know, you are watching the waves and then every second you're going to count okay, at one particular point, how many waves, how many high points it's going to come. So that's the frequency frequency okay and the other uh, concept is called period period is the time between passage of successive crests so you kind of use a timer and then you know again using the the waves um, at the beach for example um, you can use a timer and then you can just you know just find out how long does it take between two uh, adjacent or successive crests Okay. and then that's going to be the period okay so between the period and frequency they have this kind of relationship so period equals one over frequency okay I'm going to give you some examples when we are doing a uh, live session of the class so here I just want to focus on uh, the concepts the next concept related to uh, the wave is called wavelength okay I already uh, discussed about the concept uh, from the previous slide. The next one is called velocity. The velocity is the speed at which crests move. So how fast uh, the wave moves. The relationship between velocity, wave, and the period is represented in this equation. So the velocity equals wavelength divided by uh, period. Basically, the velocity equals distance. So remember, the wavelength is the distance between two adjacent crests. And period is the time between two adjacent crests. So then dividing um, wavelength by um, period is going to give you how fast the wave moves. Again, I'm going to give you some examples in class. Uh, just now, I just want you to focus on the concept first. Uh, waves, they have some other properties too. One property is called diffraction. So diffraction means that if you, the wave meets an obstacle and it's going to bend. Okay. The second one is called interference. So interference is that if you have two waves, okay, and uh, you know that if they overlap with each other, okay, and they could become larger or smaller than the original waves. For example, here, as you can see, this is wave one, this is wave two. So they are actually opposite uh, in the way. So as a result, um, they are going to become this wave, so which is smaller than this uh, original wave. Okay. So one example I can give it to you is that, you know, so. Um, I guess you know many of you played um, uh, blow bubbles, right? And uh, the bubbles actually, uh, if you blow bubbles, and then it's going to be very colorful. Some places on the bubble actually is going to be greenish, or the other place would, could be reddish. So because um, green waves and uh, green green light and then um, the red light actually they have different frequency. So um, because of interference. Some places they're going to have uh, only green, li green light and then the other one is the other place they're going to have only red light. So that's why uh, you're going to see different colors uh, there. And as I mentioned, you know, those are the common features. These features are the common features for waves, but waves, they're also different. Okay, some waves, like water waves, sound waves, well, sound waves such as when I'm talking, the vibration of my throat is going to generate a wave, so it's going to generate a sound wave. Or if you are playing an instrument, 
is also going to generate a sound wave as well. So these waves, they need some kind of medium in order to travel. So for instance, water needs water as a medium to travel and sound need, needs air in order to travel. So for instance, if I'm talking, but in the room that, you know, let's say there's no air, and you guys sit in the same room as me, for, in, for in, as, you know, assuming that you can breathe, but without air, okay, um, you guys actually cannot hear me because sound really needs a medium in order to travel. On the other hand, electromagnetic waves, they don't need any medium to, to travel. Um, so that's why, you know, um, light can travel without medium, uh, without even the existence of air. So we, I mentioned that before, if you still remember from this side, from this slide, light actually is a type of electromagnetic radiation. So which is a transmission of energy through space without physical connection through varying electric and magnetic fields. So if we go back to here, okay. Um, the electric fields actually generated by charges. So we have two different kinds of charges. One is positive, the other one kind is negative. So it doesn't matter whether it's a positive or negative charges. The charges can generate electric field, okay? Uh, and then we know Earth itself, okay? has a magnetic field, which looks like this, okay? So those are some examples about magnetic and electric fields, which I'm not gonna talk into uh, too much in details uh, for uh, introductory astronomy class. So electromagnetic waves, they are, they have oscillating electric and mag magnetic fields, okay? So if you can see here, so this is the electric field vibration and we have magnetic field vibration over here. So both electric fields and magnetic fields, they intertwine with each other as the wave is traveling along this direction. Okay. And because changing electric field is going to create a magnetic field and changing magnetic field is going to create electric field. So that's why the wave can travel okay, uh, without any medium.